Now let's talk about setting up your ideal environment for creativity and productivity. This is a very interesting challenge because there are a lot of factors at work. But I just want to start off by encouraging you that by setting up your ideal environment for creativity and productivity, you can increase your feeling of inspiration, uh, your feeling of engagement, your, uh, your anticipation, right? Your, uh, your looking forward to getting things done. And then when you're there to staying focused and to you know, really putting one foot in front of the other to create amazing results, you can increase that whole thing dramatically if you create a great environment. So your environment comes down to a few factors. Number one, your physical environment where you put yourself most of the time. So, do you work at a desk? If you do, do you stand or do you sit? I really recommend that you practice standing uh, while you're doing your work. Um, it does a lot of stuff. I mean, when you're standing up, um, it's better for your back. Um, it uh, engages more of your uh, muscles. It allows your whole body to stay straight and for your, uh, your system, your, your whole upper thing up here to kind of hang from your, your spinal cord, which is the way that it's meant to happen. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, I'm no uh, doctor or uh, expert in this field, but that the chair has been the worst thing for our backs that's ever been developed. So you might try this and you have to kind of work your way up to it. I'm actually standing at a, uh, a table here that is, um, I've got another one that you can't see that's right off camera here that I have my computer on and I stand at one of these uh, tables like this when I work. So you might try that. If you're not going to stand, you might uh, figure out the best chair to sit in possible while you're sitting down. And you're gonna wanna do some research on this to find out what the most ergonomic chair is that stresses your body the least. Um, I have a couple of friends that are using uh, these new chairs that it looks like a bar stool that's mounted on a spring and it actually swivels so that when you sit down, um, it forces you to keep your spine straight. Some people have found that sitting on one of those exercise balls, those big inflatable you know, red or blue balls, they, uh, you know, they sit on that and that also forces their body to stay straight and it builds up their abdominal tone. So wherever you're gonna sit or stand, very important. Oh, quick little, uh, little tip. If you're gonna stand and work, you might wanna buy one of those memory foam pillows that uh, people use to sleep on typically or you can get them uh, in a, um, a seat cushion size and put that on the floor where you stand because it'll allow your feet to kind of mold to it and uh, can really take a lot of strain and help distribute uh, the, the balance of your feet. It's also important to practice how you stand. All right? I practice balancing my weight from one foot to the other until I'm kind of even and I say, okay, now that's, I'm probably aligned. Um, one of my good friends was uh, uh, telling me that most people when they stand, they don't realize it, but they can be as much as 50 pounds off balance. So they can have as much as 50 more pounds resting on one side or the other. Um, to show yourself this, um, next time you're at uh, the uh, you know, kitchen and bathroom store, see if they've got scales there and put you know, one under each foot and uh, you'll see, it'll blow your mind. So practice standing up straight. You wanna get the ergonomics right so that you're aligned when you're working. So wherever you're gonna stand or wherever you're going to sit, make sure that whatever's supporting you is going to hold you in the ideal posture. And then of course work on your posture and so forth. So why do I harp on this so much? Because if you're not holding your body in the ideal kind of uh, posture and position, you're gonna be wasting a tremendous amount of energy and you're gonna be fatiguing yourself. So right there, it's gonna rob you of a lot. The next thing to consider if you're working at a computer is the ergonomics or the ease of use of the computer. Um, I found that uh, using wrist rests, um, I even have these little uh, gloves that I use now uh, that I put on that have a little wrist rest built into them. I found that those work really well. I've tried a million different things, but those really work for me. And uh, that has helped, just it relaxes me. Um, wherever I put my wrists on the mouse or the keyboard, it just kind of works better. Um, figure out how to get your computer set up so that it's not stressful for your wrists and your hands. And if you have any kind of repetitive strain disorder, read about it and learn how to work on it. Start stretching your hands every day and your wrists. If you need to, go to an expert and learn about this. Um, very important that you get all of those little pieces set up. Your computer monitor is very important. Um, I now use uh, these 30 inch Apple monitors, which, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of expensive, but I found that having all that space is, I mean, it's just amazing in terms of my productivity. 
um, if you uh, if you don't want to invest uh, all that money in one of those, you can buy two smaller monitors that'll give you you know about the same room for I mean literally under 500 bucks you can probably get uh, two monitors and the video card that'll drive them which uh, you know in this day and age it's almost a necessity to have more desk space you can have your email window open over here and then you can have what you're working on over here um, you know if you're uh, you know during your, your periods of what I call enlightened multitasking where you need to be doing things and answering emails and on telephone calls you know you're talking to somebody and you need to shoot them over a file and you got to do it while you're on there um, or let's say that you're working and you're just kind of in productivity time a lot of times you'll need a web browser open because you're doing research and then you're finding something and you need to type it up and put it into uh, you know whatever the document is you're creating or the book that you're writing uh, or you know maybe you're doing some kind of video conference and you've got to have the video window open over here and the thing that you're showing over here two monitors um, is becoming a you know almost a necessity for high productivity next how do you make yourself distraction and interruption proof in your environment this might involve things like getting a phone that you can turn off easily or setting your phone up so that you can unplug it easily or it might even involve putting the phone in a separate room so that you can't hear it when you're on focus time you got to get creative here but you got to ask yourself how do I make myself distraction proof and interruption proof um, you know one of the no-brainers is to just turn off your email client when you're not using it and definitely definitely get rid of any kind of alerts right audio alerts or video alerts or pop-ups that let you know you have a new email that stuff is robbing us of our ability to focus so take a blank piece of paper right now and uh, I'd like you to write down a list of things that you need to do that you know right now would create your optimal environment for creativity and productivity do that and then come back in a sec and we'll do our last exercise okay so finally take a blank piece of paper and I'd like you to write down the things that you need to do to create your optimal environment of creativity and productivity particularly focusing on where it is that you sit or stand when you work the actual equipment that you're using as you're working and I used a computer as an example making it so that it's it's really easy and comfortable to to mouse and to type and also maybe setting up two monitors so that you have kind of you know optimal space to work in and also focusing on distraction proofing and interruption proofing yourself whatever you have to do how do you make it so that it's almost impossible for you to be distracted or interrupted and uh, once you've made that list then figure out the action steps and go to work building your ideal work environment so that you can get the most done because our environment affects us so much and you really do deserve and owe it to yourself to create one that makes you really productive.